fun. The following is a presentation of Learfield IMG College. Live from the Rutgers Club, this is the Rutgers Football Show. Your all-access pass to the Scarlet Knights is coming your way on the Rutgers Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Tonight's show is brought to you by... To be a part of the show, give us a call at 1-877-384-1869. That's 877-384-1869. Here's your host, Chris Carlin. We are live at the Rutgers Club for the Week 5 edition of the Rutgers Football Radio Show here on the Livingston campus. Welcome, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. Chris Carlin alongside Eric Legrand. E, how are you? I'm doing great, Chris. How are you? Doing well, and it's a little bit different. It's been a difficult few days, I'm sure, and a crazy few days for our coach tonight, interim head coach Nunzio Campanelli. Coach, good to be with you. Thank you for coming tonight. Great to be here. Um, Obviously, everybody knows what transpired over the weekend after the loss to Michigan. Uh, Athletic Director Pat Hobbs uh, made the decision to make a coaching change, and Chris Ash was relieved of his duties along with offensive coordinator John McNulty. And, uh, you know, Eric, I'll I'll let uh, you speak to this too, but, uh, you know, I can't thank Coach Ash enough for being so accessible and being terrific on this show uh, over the last few years. It obviously was a very difficult situation, but uh, each and every week, he was terrific for us to work for. Absolutely, and you welcome him in my family. Just uh, everything coming from Ohio State to here, didn't really know much about who I was personally, and he got to know me, my family, and I can't thank him enough for all the support that he's been able to give to us over the years. And honestly, it's, it, it, it was great. It was great, to, it was great meeting him, great to know him, great to know his wife, Doreen, get to know his kids. It was all good, so, you know, it's a tough business, so unfortunately things happen, but I was happy that I was able to meet him and get to know him over the past three and a half, four years. Well, fantastic people to be sure, and, and we wish them nothing but the best. And this has to be, uh, I don't even know if bittersweet's the right word, Coach. It, it has to be just a strange few days for you, I'm sure, uh, after everything that transpired and Pat Hobbs asked you to be the interim head coach for the rest of the season. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously it was very tough, uh, you know, a few days for the kids, for the coaches, you know, really everyone involved. I mean, you know, uh, one of the things I told the kids is, you know, every person in our program pretty much was, was brought to Rutgers by Coach Ash. And, you know, so everyone has a great personal relationship with him. Uh, he's, a, he's a wonderful person. He's a great football coach. And, you know, kind of like you said, I mean, I guess, uh, you know, just the way it went. But uh, the impact he made on the lives of all the young men in that program, as well as the coaches and all the support staff, he, he's really a fantastic guy. And, I, you know, I can't thank him enough for the opportunity he's given me. And, you know, uh, hopefully we could – you know, do some things and build off uh, all the work that he did. Hey, Coach, tell us how now your 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 flip has your switch has to flip now up to going from being one of the position coaches to now the head coach and leading these guys. And I know you have experience, you know, coming up through the high school ranks and being a coach your entire life. But how does it now, you know, the switch flip to going into head coach mode? Uh, honestly, it's a major change because uh, you know I, I'm taking on two duties: uh, getting involved with uh, the offense and you know changing some things on the offense and kind of running the offense on top of, you know, being in charge of the whole team. Thankfully, we have a great staff. We have a great support staff. We have so many different people that uh, are, you know, helping guide uh, where we're going. And, you know, it's a little bit of a whirlwind, but uh, the kids have been awesome. You know, as emotional as it's been for them, they've done a great job of just staying focused and, you know, getting ready to go out and compete. Uh, We'll try to do the best we can to keep them excited and to try to compartmentalize, you know, their feelings about what happened at the same time. You know, the excitement of going forward. We've we got a lot of games to play, and, you know, there's great opportunity. So uh, it has been a whirlwind, but uh, it, it's also been, you know, in a strange situation. Uh, we're trying to make the most of it and trying to make some fun out of it. Our telephone number is 877-384-1869. You can tweet us your questions at Rutgers Radio on Twitter. And also, we have our microphone set up here uh, in the front. So if you're in attendance here at the Rutgers Club and you have a co- uh, question, for Coach Nunzio Campanelli, by all means, come on up front, and we will get you on camera and ready to go. Of course, 
You're listening to the show on 1450 WCTC on our vision and on the Scarlet Knights app. So what specifically was Sunday like that first day after you kind of had to hit the ground running and you're trying to figure out who's going to now handle what and shifting people around on the staff? And, and how has that changed outside of you now calling the offensive plays as well? Uh, well, I mean, I, it was a crazy day because, you know, obviously we were in and out of meetings, you know, all day. I, I, you know, first of all, I had to meet with the staff and, you know, figure out on the fly exactly what we were going to do, uh, you know, how to fill. We had to fill two roles. Uh, obviously, we had to fill, uh, you know, John's spot as well as Chris's. So uh, we took uh, Drew Lascari, who's been working with the quarterbacks as a quality control coach, and he's going to move over and coach the quarterbacks now. And then John Weiss has been uh, – uh, the offensive line GA, he's been he's going to start working with the tight ends, and so we kind of managed to fill that. Coach Boo and the defensive staff are pretty much keeping everything status quo. You know, the the entire defensive staff is intact, so that that's not really a, a major issue. And then just kind of a lot of the scheduling things, as well as you know, I'm sure a lot of the players were kind of like, especially on the defensive side of the ball that don't know me as well, were a little bit like, you know, well, how the heck did you end up the coach? You know, so uh, <laughs> you know, they, uh, so just spending some time with those guys and each of the different position groups and getting to know those guys. That's a lot what the, that first day really was, you know, meeting with the leadership council and kind of talking to them a little bit about, you know, some of my beliefs and some of the things that I think are really important in building a team. And honestly, they've been very receptive. They're great kids. Uh, you know, it's, they're an easy group to get along with and they're a very close group. And, you know, hopefully this is a type of event that can galvanize them a little bit. And I'm glad you mentioned the leadership council because that's where I was going. How much have you had to meet with them and getting to talk to them and, like you said, sharing your beliefs with them and how have they responded to you? Honestly, I think they've been great. I, you know, we, we spend a good amount of time on Sunday together, and obviously you would like to sit and personally meet with every player on the team, but, you know, it's like 115 guys, and you're trying to get ready for a game. That wasn't really possible. So I basically met with every position group on, uh, on Monday and got to basically, in a way, sit with every player on the team. So uh, that was a good way to kind of kind of get the message about where we're going and what we're trying to do out, and, and the kids – really were very responsive. They did a great job and came out and did a heck of a job of practice yesterday and practiced really hard today. So it seems like uh, at least we're off to a good start. I know there's been a lot of focus uh, on the offensive struggles and, and what's going on on that side of the ball. But here you are, you're four games into the season already. So how difficult is it to make a lot of changes to try to be just more productive with points? Uh, yeah, you know, I think that uh, – you're not going to change. You're not, you can't take major changes with something when you're this far in, especially when you have to play a game, you know, in, in four days. So basically what, we're, what we did was we streamlined a lot of what we did to trying to get concepts that are similar in different formations, different personnel groups, things that the quarterbacks can understand and make it easy for them, make it easy for the players. And, uh, you know, we're doing the best we can to kind of streamline some of those things and do things that will get the ball in the hands of our best players. And, you know, give a chance to have some guys make some plays in space. And talk about now your personal routine, how much that has changed. And as I just said to you, you got off the field, you know, a little bit late, 6, 6, 15, and getting a shower and coming over to here. How much has things changed for you in your personal routine? Well, I haven't seen my kids in four days. So, <laughs> you know, just, you know, uh, so yeah, it's changed a lot, to be honest, uh, it, it, because we're kind of trying to set the foundation for a lot of things. So, you know, uh, Monday and Tuesday were really busy days, which they always are, but uh, – you know, this week in particular, they were, you know, they were really, really busy. The other responsibilities that come with it, the show, all the media stuff, everything that, that um, you know, you've, you've been around it certainly a la uh, the last couple of years, but here you are, all of a sudden, you're a head coach in the Big Ten, not a few years removed from being a head coach at a powerhouse high school program in New Jersey. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, um, one of my brothers reached out to me and was like, holy cow, you're actually going to be the head coach of a Big Ten football team on Saturday. You know, that's pretty, you know, I mean, obviously I'm from a football family. I've spent my entire life on a football field, but that'll be, a, you know, obviously a major change. And, uh, you know, and honestly the fulfillment of kind of a lifetime dream, I certainly wouldn't have expected it to happen this way or to be uh, in this spot. But, uh, you know, I am honored that uh, – Pat has given me the opportunity, and, you know, I look forward to representing Rutgers and representing New Jersey and, and our team. Is there anybody in particular that you have reached out to for advice, or whether if it's been a brother or a past coach or things of that nature, just anybody? Well, you know, I, I certainly talked to my brother Anthony a little bit. You know, just he's been in a bunch of programs, and, you know, it hasn't necessarily been a head coach, but, uh, you know, he, he's obviously been very helpful. And then, you know, really I've leaned more on the guys in the staff, uh, you know, on the offensive staff. Uh, we have a lot of continuity. A lot of guys know each other very well. On, on the defensive side, you know, Coach Boo and Coach Joseph have been, uh, 
you know, the great leaders and Vince Cruz has been around for quite a while. So, you know, he's been doing this for, for you know, a long time and he, he's been very helpful. He runs a special team. So uh, in, in some aspects, a lot of things are continuing to run themselves with minor changes. Uh, so those are the guys that have really leaned on. Coach Rosamondo has head coaching experience before. How about him in that role for you? And is he a guy that when you have to make those decisions in game and it's on the fly that you're going to lean on a little bit more uh, just to help you out in that regard? Uh, absolutely. You know, from the game planning standpoint, I, you know, I think that, one, you know, when I'm stepping out of the room to make sure that we're taking care of, you know, some of the, the head coach responsibilities, Pete is, you know, all over you know, exactly how we want to do things game plan wise. You know, we spent a lot of time together over the last, you know, six, eight months, you know, working with the tight ends and the O-line. And, you know, obviously he's got a great football mind. He's got a ton of experience. He's been a head coach for a long time. So uh, I'm going to lean on him a lot, you know, not just on game day, but every day. What would you say that I guess the, you know, when things come in new, this almost brings that rejuvenated air in. Would you say there was a rejuvenated air come almost in practice or how are the guys handle? Are they upset or are they looking forward to a new opportunity? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure they're upset, and I, I know they were very upset Sunday and Monday, but by Tuesday, you know, we talked about, hey, when 2 o'clock meetings start, you know, we got to turn the page and get to work, and they had great energy at practice yesterday, uh, great energy at practice today. I thought the kids worked really hard. I think the defensive guys are flying around. Uh, the offensive guys are, you know, pretty excited about some of the different things that we're going to do, and, you know, so I, I, I think that we're going to try to, you know, build off that and try to just have, like, you know, hopefully a breath of fresh air and, you know, we changed a couple things in our routine to try to maybe make things a little easier for them and, and uh, allow them to relax a little more and get a little more free time. And, you know, hopefully all those things can kind of lead to some success on the field on Saturdays. All right, we'll take our first break. We'll come back. We'll get to know you a little bit more personally for a lot of the fans uh, and, frankly, me and Eric, who don't know you quite <laughs> as well. Uh, but give them a chance to, to feel about your background. As you said, you're from a, a coaching family. We'll talk more about that. Uh, coming up in just a bit later on in the show, Tyshawn Fogg, Rutgers linebacker. One of the captains is going to join us as well here at the Rutgers Club. It is the Rutgers football show here on, uh, of course, our vision on the Scarlet Knights app and on 1450 WCTC. Stay with us. We're just getting started here until 8 o'clock tonight at the Rutgers Club on the Livingston campus. From Learfield IMG College, this is the Rutgers football radio show. This season, you can share a Coke with your team on it. So I'm going to tell you how with a little help from this quarterback. Sally, 44. You can share a Coke when your team's up. Red Poncho. You can share a Coke when your team's down. Happy Jolly. You can even share a Coke with your rival on game day. Chili, chili, chili. Or you can share a Coke when you're giving out your famous guacamole recipe in a completely packed stadium. Cilantro, chopped onion, squeeze the lime, Roma tomato, hike. Share a Coke with a fan this season. Ice cold. Technology is the backbone of every business, but choosing the right technology requires time and resources most IT managers cannot spare. For 30 years, SHI International has helped businesses select, deploy, and manage IT solutions that meet their unique business goals. From end users to the cloud, SHI helps build and maintain some of the world's most complex IT environments. Find out how SHI can help your organization by visiting SHI.com. That's SHI.com. SHI, innovative solutions, world-class support. This is the Rutgers Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. To protect his home and family from disaster, Steve used courage, wisdom, and his camera phone. That should do it. Way to go, Steve. By simply taking digital pictures of his family's important documents, Steve can always have them stored safely online, no matter when disaster strikes. Learn other simple ways to protect your home and family before a natural disaster at ready.gov. That's ready.gov. A message from FEMA and the Ad Council. Hey, it's me, your cell phone. We need to talk about something, something serious. I know you love me. I know you like using me wherever you are, but I feel like this isn't working out when you're driving. I know you may think that it's possible to focus both on me and the road, but I just don't feel the same way. I think we should spend time away from each other when you're driving. It's for the best. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, a message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council.
We have returned on the Rutgers football radio show here on 1450 WCTC and on our vision and, of course, on the Scarlet Knights app as well. Chris Garland, Eric Legrand, along with Rutgers interim head coach Nunzio Campanelli. Can we just can we clarify that for everybody, especially me? It's Campanelli. Yes, it is. Campanelli. It is Campanelli. Okay. Uh, you know, Fooch is telling me Campanelli, I've heard Campanile, I've heard 10 different ways to say it, and that's going to drive you nuts. Campanile? Uh, well, I've heard that too, I don't know, listen. I'm, I'm used to it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Gotta, first of all, just tell us a little bit about, you know, growing up in New Jersey, being a Jersey guy, and obviously uh, a football family top to bottom. Well, you know, I, I, my father was a football coach. My father's still a football coach. He uh, was a head coach at Patterson Catholic and Paramus Catholic uh, in the 80s and 90s, and then... Uh, He's coached a bunch of places. He coached at uh, DePaul Catholic, uh, Bergen Tech. He coached with me at Bergen Catholic for quite a while. Now he coaches there with my brother. And uh, I have three brothers that are all football guys. My brother Vito is the head coach at Bergen Catholic uh, now. He replaced me there. But he was uh, at a few different schools, Seton Hall, Westwood, Bergen Tech. And, and uh, my brother Nick is the offense coordinator at DePaul. My brother Anthony is a Rutgers grad, played here, uh, coached here. Now he's uh, the linebacker's coach at Michigan. So. Uh, football certainly runs in our blood. You know, we've all, you know, been involved in this game pretty much since the day we were born. My parents met when my father was coaching my uncle and you know, my mom was 18. So they've, uh, you know, they even met on a football field. So uh, football certainly in our blood. It's been a bit, huge part of everything we've done uh, our entire life. And, um, you know, I, I, don't know I, I couldn't think of a much better way, way to, to grow up and I couldn't think of a much better way to raise my kids. You know, I have two boys that are uh, 13 and 7, Michael and James, and uh, they're even the little ones playing football now. Uh, I, so, you know, I, I think it's the greatest game in the world because it's, you know, it's all about the team. It's about sacrificing for the people around you, and uh, I think there's no better way to raise your kids than that. And what's it been like, as you say, you're a Jersey guy. I'm sure the day we announced on Sunday that you were going to be the interim head coach, how much did your phone blow up from everyone reaching out? Ooh, uh, my <laughs> phone, I was literally smoking, I think, at some point. Uh, you know, it... Uh, I mean, I can't even begin to tell you how many messages, probably in the thousands, you know, so, uh, you know, it's pretty, you know, I, I, you know, and it's, uh, you know, I really appreciate the amount of support that I've received and the amount of people that have reached out and, are, you know, are excited for, uh, for me and for the opportunity and, you know, uh, hopefully we can just take advantage of it. Uh, as you're a kid growing up, was there any other thought, it doesn't sound like in your family, like, you know what, Dad, I'm kind of into baseball a little bit more. I'm kind of into something else a little bit more. I'm not into sports, Dad. Was there any kind of a thought of anything but football growing up? Uh, well, I mean, there was wrestling and baseball. That was about it. But, sure. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I pretty much was involved in some sport at, at all, at all po uh, points of my life. But uh, when, when I got out of college, honestly, I thought I was going to law school. I really didn't have any sights set on, on being a football coach. I just kind of was doing it on the side because it was something I loved. And I, you know, uh, I remember one day telling Greg Tolum, like, hey, uh, I don't think I'm going to law school. And uh, <laughs> he was like, yeah, hey, you were never. You know, and my, I told my wife that we were getting engaged. And she was like, yeah, there was no chance you were going to law school. Uh, you know, this is what I was, you know, I think I was meant to do. And, you know, uh, I really never worked a day in my life. And what's it been like now? I guess seeing some of your players that you've developed, we were just talking about how when I was in high school, you were at Don Bosco from, oh, the, oh, from 2000 until 2009. You see these guys grow up, and now you see some of the guys that you coach. What's that been like, being able to coach these guys now at the college level? Uh, yeah, honestly, it, it's, uh, it's really the thing that probably makes you most proud is to see what they end up doing. You know, I mean, I remember reading Joe Paterno saying years ago that, you know, if you want to find out how good a coach I am, uh, ask me where those guys are in 20 years. And, you know, th those are the things that you start, start to see, you know, in, you know, 21 years of coaching football where you see some of those guys have gone with their lives and some of the things they've accomplished. That, that's, you know, really probably the greatest payoff you could ever get uh, in any profession. So uh, I think that's one of the things that makes it so special. You know, the challenges for a family, you have seen it growing up in it, and you have seen it, uh, obviously, with your wife and your kids, the challenges of a family, uh, of being a football family in terms of coaching and that uh, – in that regard, just how difficult that is for them to adapt to. And like when you said, you knew you weren't going to law school and your wife said, yeah, I kind of knew that. She, it sounds like she knew what she was in for. Oh yeah, no doubt. I mean, you know, that there was no way that uh, she, she knew exactly who I was. And uh, the, the truth is though, you know, I believe that, well one, you know, I, I have zero hobbies other than football in my family. So I'm not really, you know, I'm not going to play golf. I'm not hanging out or I don't really have a whole lot of, you know, fun things to do other than football, you know, so uh, I, but I, I mean that in a good way, like, you know, I mean, I, I think my kids understand that, you know, 
you're supposed to go and work hard at whatever your passion is, and you're supposed to pour your life into your family and to the people that you care about. And I, I think that, uh, you know, that's always been my focus, you know, I mean, is making sure that, you know, I could be a great father. And I think coaching football is probably an unbelievable way to raise your kids because they get to be around so many great people. They get to be around so many great young men that they would hopefully grow up to emulate. And I think that's maybe the, uh, the best thing about it. And coach, were you up in the box during the games or were you down on the field? Uh, I've been on the field. So you know, now you're going back to, uh, well, down to that head, coach, head coaching role. How are you going to be, I guess, to be looking at, you know, the tight end position, make sure they're doing the right job, but overall watching everything now and calling plays on offense. But in the meantime, also now watching the defense. Yeah, you know, I mean, obviously it's a big change because of the level, but uh, I have called over 200 games as a coordinator mm -hmm. in my life, which in football is a lot of games. I mean, I was the offense coordinator at Don Bosco when I was 22. Uh, I was I coached 90 games or so as a head coach, so I've done uh, a lot of that. So I think from that standpoint, I will be very comfortable managing the game. I'll be very comfortable calling the game. Uh, you know, the biggest concern is you know the, the language or the verbiage that we use. Um, you know, in my brain, sometimes it reverts back to 20 years of what I, you know, what mm. the way I see it. You mm -hmm. know, and and we're really using things in a lot of ways the way uh, the way John saw it. So. Uh, it's all the same concepts and ideas. It's just a matter of making sure that you get it wired the right way so, you know, we don't hurt ourselves, but, you know, that we're effective and, uh, you know, basically functional on Saturdays, you know, because that's one of the big issues. You know, we can't, we can't hurt ourselves. I mean, the game's hard enough, so we can't have penalties. We can't have any wrong calls. We can't waste, you know, we just can't waste opportunities. That's been one of the bugaboos for this team, the penalties. Uh, how do you address that? I mean, it's... It feels like it's one of those things that, that almost feels like quicksand sometimes that you just kind of get into it and you have trouble getting out of it. Yeah, yeah it is. You know, uh, in a certain, you know, it has to do with a bunch of different things. But, you know, I actually think we have a disciplined group. I and mean, if you watch how hard they work and how committed they are to doing things right, you know, it, it, it's not... It, 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 you're, it's almost shocking if you're at practice and then you turn around and see some of that stuff happen in the game. And, you know, sometimes it maybe it's just a confidence issue. You know, we, we do some things that are like self-inflicted wounds, you know, pre-snap penalties, things like that, where you just, you can't have it, you know, or, you know, we get the wrong play call in the huddle and we're wasting timeouts or getting delayed games. And uh, those are things that we have to do a better job of coaches of preparing our guys during the week to just get them to settle down on game day and play with confidence. You know, I, I've already told the kids, and I've been saying this for a long time, there's only two ways to get confidence. It's you know, it's basically hard work or accomplishment. And if you haven't done it before, you don't really have the confidence of accomplishment. So all you can rely on is your hard work. So we got to make sure that we're working really hard to be disciplined at the little things in practice. And if we do that, you know, hopefully we eliminate some of those things and, you know, we put ourselves in better situations. Uh, you know, it's a lot easier to convert a third and three than it is a third and eight. So, you know, those are things that, that have definitely hurt us all year. And Coach Ash always talked about having aggressive penalties. Do you feel the same? You know, he's, he's accepts those. Do you feel the same way, being aggressive? You know, sometimes you're going to get penalties like that. And are, are you okay with it? Yeah, well, you know, I mean, it, there's two teams playing out there, you know. So, I mean, sometimes the other team forces some of those things. You know, you can get a hold or a pass interference sometimes. You know, you can't have late hits. You can't hit guys out of bounds. You know, now football's changing, so you got to really be careful about hitting in the strike zone. You know, those are things that guys have to work really hard at. You, you can't have those things. I mean, you, but – the, the things that happen over the course of the game, you know, that's going to happen, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, but you still have to limit them, you know, and, uh, you know, if you, if you have five penalties in a game, okay, maybe that's acceptable. You can't have 10 for 90 yards. I mean, you know, if you watch the last couple of games, I mean, getting 90 yards has been hard for us. So, you know, to give back 90 yards is, is you know, it kills us. Let's get into a couple of questions we got for you on Twitter. You can send them uh, to at Rutgers Radio on Twitter. Um, this is kind of a, an interesting question. It's one besides, you know, it's one that's a little bit out there, but I think you'll see where it's going. Rob on Twitter, what's your goal for the Maryland game besides winning? <laughs> is there any particular position that you're looking for more specifically? This is Rob's question. I think, you know, a big word that we have talked an awful lot about is progress. So is progress simply defined at this point by wins and losses? Um, well, you know, we have eight games to go, so I think that um, we have to build towards something. I mean, do I feel confident that we have an opportunity to win on Saturday? Absolutely. And I think our players have to feel that way, and I think that we have to go out there playing with the expectation of winning. 
But no matter what happens, we have to play cleaner football. You know, we have to stop beating ourselves. We have to be able to move the ball down the field. We have to be able to finish drives. You know, we have not put our defense in very good positions because, you know, the last three games, I think we're averaging about five points a game. So that's not really going to win. It's hard to win a lot of football games that way. Uh, so I, I think that a lot of those, a lot of those things, if we can just, if we can throw the ball effectively, if we could score in the red zone, uh, if we can get some burst plays, then we have a chance to at least have the guys feel like going into the next week, we've continued to improve and we know that we'll keep getting better because we've made some changes. I, mean, I can't guarantee that on Saturday, it's, you know, we're going to look like the, uh, you know, 99 Rams or something, but <laughs> I, I think that uh, we have a chance to, to clean some things up and improve. And you know, if we just keep doing that every week, then yeah, progress is clearly important. Okay, another question on Twitter from Scarlett Chop. How much of a role, if any, will you take with the defense, or is that simply going to be Coach Boo's department? I think uh, Coach Boo's got a really good beat on it. He's got a ton of experience. He's been a coordinator for a long time. I mean, you know, there are certain ways that maybe I could help within the game, you know, as far as game management. But, uh, you know, it, it would, you know, would, there's no way that I could go in there and say, like, oh, I'm going to make a major change on the defense. I'm going to help them. I mean, you know, that's not really uh, what it is. I think that, uh, you know, he had a really good idea about some of the things that he thinks are little tweaks that can help us. And uh, he's got a really good plan, and we'll just keep building off it. And we've been talking a lot about the players and about you yourself, but there's also a moment where the coaches, they go through a, a rough change, too, as well, and worrying about everything what's going to happen with them. Have you been able to talk with them and keep them confident and keep their confidence up and also go out there to coach the players during a week like this? Well, you know, the first thing is they're professionals, um, and so they, they know how to do things the right way. But probably the more important thing is uh, they love our players, and they know that, you know, our players deserve our best every day, no matter what the circumstance. You know, everything that you're trying to teach as a coach is about how you respond to adversity. And, you know, obviously this is a really tough situation for every coach in the program because, you know, theoretically every one of them lost their job. So uh, now, you know, they have to go out there and be professionals and do things the right way. And, you know, they've actually been awesome. You know, they've just said, hey, we're going to go out and make the most of the opportunity. We're going to give our kids, our, their, you know, our best. And, you know, we're going to put our heads down and go to work. And, you know, we'll look up at the end and, and see what the results are. When you're a position coach, you're obviously focused on your group. How much now versus before are, can you – is it completely looking at the offense through a fresh set of eyes because you're so focused on what your group is doing? Or have you been able to kind of evaluate other positions and other guys that maybe you weren't necessarily in charge of before? Well, you know, we do watch film together every day. So you're, you're you know, you watch every play of every practice together every day. So you have a pretty good sense of what's going on. And then, you know, as I said, I mean, in 20 years as a play caller, you know, I have always been, you know, since I've been here, I've always been looking at it and thinking like, well, how do I see it? Do I see it that way? You know, I mean, obviously you're going to coach it, you know, however, uh, you know, whoever the coordinator wants to run it. But at the same time, you kind of look at little things that you think, okay, this might be a little easier. I've coached quarterbacks for really my entire life. That's probably, you know, if you looked at my career, you'd say, oh, you know, what does he do? He's a quarterback coach or a guy that's developed a lot of quarterbacks. So, I always look at the offense through the quarterback's eyes and try to see, like, would that be effective for him? Is it simple for him? Uh, can he make it work? And, you know, so any of the tweaks that we've made are really, in my mind, a simpler way to teach the quarterback, you know, uh, how, to, how to do things. So uh, I, you know, right, wrong, or indifferent, I've been doing that, you know, since I've been here because all of my experience as a coach has been through running the offense through the QB. And, Coach, this is a huge opportunity for you. I know you have a lot to get done before Saturday, but how excited are you to get to Saturday, get to show your opportunity and, and show off those little tweaks that you're making? I know, like I said, it's only Wednesday, you got to get to Saturday, but I'm sure in the back of your head there's some excitement to be able to go out there and show what you can do. There's a ton of excitement, but uh, <laughs> if you saw some of the mistakes at practice today, you'd like to rewind it back to, <laughs> you know, back to Monday. But, uh, you know, the, the truth is that, uh, you know, I mean, that, that's kind of the way it goes. You know, it's, it's hard, you know, when you're learning, it's hard to be you know, have the intensity level really high because, you know, guys are trying to get through some things. So we'll slow it down the next couple of days and try to make sure that it's really cleaned up. But uh, at the same time, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely, I couldn't be more excited. You know, I mean, if, you know, for, I wouldn't have chosen to be in this position this way, but, you know, I am in this position. So, I, you know, I'll make no bones about it. You know, it's probably about as exciting an opportunity as I could have ever dreamed of having, you know, uh, and, you know, I, I, I kind of thought I was on this journey and say, like, hey, in 10 years, I'm going to work my tail off so that, you know, by the time I'm 50, I'll be in that spot. And, you know, here 18 months later, you know, uh, 
you know, I have the opportunity, so I'm going to do everything I can to make the most of it for our players. He is Rutgers interim coach Nunzio Campanelli. He will take a little break with us here for a few minutes as we visit with one of the captains of the Scarlet Knights, Tyshawn Fogg, is going to join us next on the Rutgers football show. You can ask your questions via Twitter, on the telephone at 877-384-1869. And if you're in attendance here at the Rutgers Club on the Livingston campus, by all means, come on up front and we have our microphone set up. Coach Nunes will be back here in just a little bit. But up next, we visit with Tyshawn Fox. Stay with us. From Learfield IMG College, this is the Rutgers Football Radio Show. Managing your health care can sometimes feel overwhelming. With the new Horizon Blue app from Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, you get the care and support you want right in your hands. Now you can have all of your health care coverage details and access to support at your fingertips. Get help scheduling appointments. Find doctors and specialists. Access your coverage details. Get updates on your claims. See easy-to-understand cost details and get support straight from the experts at Horizon. You can even see a doctor wherever it's most convenient for you via your smartphone or tablet. Downloading the app is easy and free. Text GETAPP to 422-271 today or find it in the App Store or Google Play. There is no charge to download the Horizon Blue app, but rates from your wireless provider may apply. The Horizon Blue app, it's not just an app, it's your direct connection to care. This is the Rutgers Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Today, millions of people all across America are building a life in recovery from addiction and mental illness, helping themselves and helping each other with friends, family, and community lending their strength and support. Join the Voices for Recovery. Together, we are stronger. For 24-hour free and confidential information and treatment referral for mental and substance use disorders, for you or someone you know, call 1-800-662-HELP. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Wake up and text. Text and eat. Mm -mm. Text and meet up with a friend you haven't seen in forever. Hi. Oh, hey. Text and complain that they're on their phone the whole time. Uh. Text and listen to them complain that you're on your phone the whole time. Uh. Text and whatever. But when you get behind the wheel, give your phone to a passenger. Put it in the glove box. Just don't text and drive. Visit StopTextsStopRex.org. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. SHI helps companies select, deploy, and manage cutting-edge technology. Find out how by visiting SHI.com. SHI, innovative solutions, world-class support. We have returned to the Rutgers Club here on the Livingston campus for this week's edition of the Rutgers Football Radio Show. Chris Carlin, Eric Legrand, joined now by one of the co-captains of the Scarlet Knights, he is linebacker Tyshawn Fogg. Tyshawn, how are you? I'm good. How are you? We're doing great. We're doing great. We appreciate you coming by and spending some time with us, especially on what I'm sure has been a very difficult week. You were a part of Coach Ash's first full recruiting class we were just talking about during the, the break, and uh, I know a lot of guys were obviously very disappointed with the news the other day. Right. Um, biggest thing is, like I told the teams, a lot of the leaders had to come together and, and push us forward. Like today at practice, a lot of guys are flying around doing better. Tuesday was kind of a good day to really judge where the team was after the news on Sunday. But at the end of the day, the captains had to step up and basically lead the team and just have a good practice and looking forward to Maryland this week. And on Sunday, you know, when you hear the news, you know, yeah. right away, you can't just go to being a regular player and being able to soak. Right. What does your mind do with being that leader of the team and try to bring the guys together and dealing with, you know, the tough time? But having to move forward from there. Right. Um, the biggest thing is you just got to talk to the guys. At the end of the day, it's big news. Like when things like that happen, it obviously affects the team. With a guy like that, did a lot of stuff for the program, did a lot of stuff for the players. So the leaders came together. The team had a little team meeting with just the players and everything. Like, look, guys, at the end of the day, it happened. But like, you got to get together. When it come back on Tuesday, we got to come work hard as a team and get it together and just get ready for Maryland. As one of the captains, you immediately kind of go into that mode. Do you Give yourself a, a few moments to kind of process what just happened, or is it immediately thinking about everybody else and how we're going to handle this? 
Um, basically, as a leader, when you become a leader, you got to put people before yourself. That's the biggest thing. Of course, I'm a human, so I always, you know, I feel emotions. I'm like, oh, I'm sad, whatever. But having that Sunday afternoon off and having Monday off as well, it gave me the opportunity to reflect upon it. But when I came back to Tuesday, I was ready to get right back to business. And Tasha, I know you're from Asbury Park, and you, but you've been played uh, high school down in Maryland. Right. What's it going to be like playing against some of the guys that you, I'm sure, were recruited with that Maryland, seeing some of those guys down right. there? What's that going to be like for you? Um, it's definitely going to be a, me like mean a lot to me. Chance Campbell, another middle linebacker there at Maryland. We played next to each other for two years. So seeing him on the field is definitely going to be a lot. Anthony McFarlane, a dynamic back, is playing against him. is going to be like, you know, real fun. So we're going to look forward to this Saturday and get it, you know, ready, strap it up. Our guest is Tyshawn Fogg, Rutgers co-captain and linebacker on this week's Rutgers football radio show. All right. So tell us a little bit about yourself growing up down in Maryland. And as Eric said, you were born in Asbury Park. Mm -hmm. First, what, five, six years here before you moved to Maryland? Is that yeah, right? Yeah, so I moved to Maryland in sixth grade. So, okay, yeah. I went sixth grade. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, tell us about getting into football, how that kind of developed for you, all the sports you were involved in as a kid. Um, biggest thing is when I moved to Maryland, it was a huge transition. Coming from Asbury Park, New Jersey, it was definitely a different lifestyle to get accustomed to. Me and my mom moved down there in sixth grade, so I started middle school there. Then um, eventually well, I went to high school, like private schools are like a huge thing down there. So I went to Calvary Hall High School, met Coach Donald Davis, which is a tremendous head coach, a tremendous guy. He taught me a lot. So that's what kind of got me in a little bit of a recruiting process. A lot of guys on my team were highly recruited as well. So that kind of just got me like in the love of the game of football and just gave me opportunities to go to different places around the country and ultimately landed me here at Rutgers University, which, you know, I wouldn't trade anything for the world. Love being here. So that's the opportunity. I was going to say, I'm sorry. Tyson, I know you do a lot of stuff off the field as well. And talk right. a little bit about some of the stuff you do, you're doing, being a leader off the field and, and in the school, in the community. Just talk a little bit about that. Right, um, I do a little bit of everything. I'm the vice president of leadership development. It's a SAC board that I'm in, it's a student athlete um, like committee or whatever. We meet every Monday, once a month. And that's something I'm interested in too. I also go to Verbal Mayhem. I'm really big into poetry. That's kind of something I'm new into this year. And um, along with being a captain and unit leader, I also like to lead in the classroom. The biggest thing, I take academics really seriously. I major in human resource management, and I'm a minor in entrepreneurship. So that's just things I'm interested in. And I'm also planning to join more groups and things off campus as well this year. All right, there are not many linebackers that you meet that are interested in poetry. Right. <laughs> so how did that happen? Um, honestly, when I first started college, it was something I'm interested in. Um, me and Christian and Yechi, another uh, Jack outside linebacker guy, were kind of interested in. A few of my friends came up to me and just kind of like, hey, maybe you'd like, be interested in this opportunity. We went to one of the meetings and I kind of fell in love with it. Started writing poetry myself. And uh, that's just kind of something I do on my off time. And camp was like a huge opportunity for me to do it with all the free time and with football and our off time and everything, I kind of got a chance to write. I feel like I saw that video. I think Chris posted it up on, uh, on uh, Instagram. Was that your guys' class when you guys were up there and reading some of the lines that you wrote down? Is yeah, that yeah. your class that you were in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I saw a little bit about that. I got to see yours now. I didn't get to see you, but I need to see that next. <laughs> For sure. All right, so do you have a favorite poet? or what? I mean, like, what's your style of writing? Um, basically, free verse poetry. It's kind of, it's still kind of new to me, so I kind of didn't get into different styles of poetry. But right now, it's free verse. Uh, Tupac Shakur, even though people know him as a rapper, he's also a very, like, affluent poet. And that's something, like, I hold dear. He's from Baltimore, Maryland, so that's kind of, like, when I was in high school, it was like a lot of people was telling me about, so I've been into his poetry, Maya Angelou, and just different poets of that nature. Well, it sounds like you got a bunch of different stuff. You have the sack meetings, poetry, right. class, football. Right. I guess, how do you manage all that time and put and find your ways? Do you have a routine that you go through weekly, or mm -hmm. do you kind of freestyle go through it? Um, I actually a very organized person. It's funny okay. that you say that. We have advisors, you know, on the football team that always keeps us in check. We have a time management sheet. I actually have a planner. I have to write down literally every little thing that I'm doing. Like, I'm an organization freak. So every little thing that pops up, even this meeting, I had to hurry up and write on my calendar or whatever. <laughs> Hasin told me about it. Shout out to him. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> So I'll put that in my calendar, brush that in there. And after this, I'm straight to homework and just getting ready for the next day. Well, it's worked out pretty well because you're Big Ten Distinguished Scholar this year and your academic all Big Ten as well. Sure. And, you know, just for you personally, that's got to be incredibly rewarding. Right. Um, yeah, it definitely means a lot. I mean, it feels good when all that hard work pays off because at the end of the day, my mom said I'm here for academics first, football second, and that's something I hold dear to my heart. 
And every single day I get an opportunity to be in the classroom, I perform just as hard in the classroom as I do in the field. So that's something I just, you know, continue to do here in my career at Rutgers University. Well, as I said, you were well-rounded. Can you talk a little bit about your mom? How did she instill some of these qualities into you? How did you go about your business um, when you got here? Figuring out, I want to do this, this, and that. Being able to manage it, and like you said, all Big Ten honors, you're doing a hell of a job. I have to say that. So how was that instilled in you at a young age? I appreciate it. Thank you a lot. Um, having a single mother in the house was definitely kind of hard growing up. But the biggest thing with that, she always offered every single opportunity she possibly could to get me to the next level. She sacrificed me going to private school. Private school isn't cheap. So when she put me in there, it was very hard, difficult, going to a public school system to a private school system. So I had to get acclimated quickly. So as soon as she instilled those things in me, look, it's going to be hard. But at the end of the day, you got to go just as hard in the classroom doing what I do in the field. And I love football. I've always been playing a game of football since I was about seven years old. So I always put that energy that I did on the field right in the classroom. And that kind of brought me to like how I am today. I'm organized. I always handle my business in the class. And I kind of push others to do the same thing I am on the team. So that's kind of been going kind of well for me. Rutgers co-captain Tyshawn Fogg with us on the Rutgers football radio show this week. When you... Uh when you're out there on the field and you've become one of the leaders of this team and you've got guys that you've played an awful lot of fo football with, with guys like Tyreek and, mm. and people like that, what do people not know about you guys that they should know? Um, the biggest thing is these guys are really like good guys. These guys act the same way every single time on and off the field. It's just that they aren't just football players. Guys are true people. I always talk to those guys. The linebacker unit is really close. Every time we're in meetings with Coach Boo, we always joke around, play around with each other. We're just like a good unit. It's more than just us playing on the field. We're actually like fun people to hang around. We're good people to talk to. We have conversations with anybody. And it's just like a brotherhood. It's true, like a true brotherhood on the team, and especially in the linebacker room. So that's something like guys really don't know much about. So yeah. And as you're now into your junior year, I want to talk about going back to when you first got here right. as a freshman. Mm -hmm. Who did you look up to for that leadership role as now that you stepped into leading these guys? Who was that, that inspiration and motivation for you? Um, Deontay Roberts was a middle linebacker, two-time captain here at Rutgers. And that was a guy I kind of always looked forward to. I was playing world linebacker actually for two years before I went to the Mike position. And he was a guy that I always talked to. He recruited me here trying to get me here. He was a guy that always like motivated me like, hey, you're young right now, but look, your time is going to come fast. And honestly, he was right. He will always tell me I'll be the next captain. But hearing that from a two-time captain and a senior was kind of shocking. Like, like, I'm only a freshman. I'm only a sophomore. But hey, as soon as they stepped in the plate and it kind of happened and I stepped into that captain and that leadership role, it kind of surprised me. And that's a guy that I owe a lot of credit to and a lot of like a guy that, you know, led me in the right direction and something I really have for a lifetime. You were talking about practice earlier. The mentality of the team now, you've obviously just undergone a major change, mm -hmm. uh, but two-thirds of the season remains in front of you. Right. So what have you guys talked about in terms of the goals here? Um, the biggest thing is the practice that you have today and the next practice that you have tomorrow are the most important days. At the end of the day, we know the situation that we're facing right now, but the biggest thing is getting better each and every single day. We can't look in the past and look at the negative things. The biggest thing is looking for Maryland looking to play a clean game, looking to play fast, with a lot of energy and just getting better with your brothers each and every single week. And I want to bring a little bit back to off the field. I know Chris mentioned my one thing I always ask is, <laughs> where do you go to eat? And who right. you, I guess who you hanging out? I know you talk about you're close with the linebackers, but mm -hmm. who's your roommates, who you living with, and right. where you going to eat? Um, Bo Melton, CJ Onyechi, and Elijah Barnwell are my roommates. And um, we love Diesel and Dukes. It's like a fantastic burger spot. We're getting it every, every week. week. Getting it every Diesel week. and Dukes every week? A every every week. week. It's the same answer. <laughs> And Chris, I have not yet to go there. And me neither. That's a shame on me. Uh, it's shame on me. You guys have to what, try that. Right, what's your What's your go-to there? It's a breakfast burger. So I get the breakfast burger. It comes with a fried egg and aioli. <laughs> it's like garlic aioli that comes with it and yeah. ketchup. But I make it a double patty. So because like one patty is just isn't enough. Then I get the Cajun fries, well done, and uh, fried Oreos. I know Coach Parker might not want to hear this because it's kind of unhealthy, <laughs> so hopefully he isn't watching this, but that's something I truly, like, you know, enjoy eating. And that's Cole all Murphy was here last week. He said the exact same thing, the, the breakfast burger. He said it was amazing. 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 I guys know, have to try it. I didn't know they had the fried Oreos. Though. Fried Oreos. They're amazing. It comes with four of them. Good. I think Mama Dukes might be making a stop in the way <laughs> home. Um, it, Tyshawn, all right, a couple, couple last things, just about you personally. Right. It doesn't even sound like you have much free time, but if you did have any free time, mm -hmm. what would you be doing? Um, my free time, honestly, I enjoy doing everything. Like my daily life, just doing homework, just hanging out with friends, uh, doing poetry, and just really just hanging out. I really like being around my guys. Um, I read a lot and I read a ton of books. And just being around my friends, honestly, us just hanging out, walking around campus, 
getting to like know other people around campus besides the athletes and besides the football players is something I truly enjoy doing. Because you got to open up your circle sometimes. It isn't just about playing sports here at Rutgers University. This is an experience that you're going to have for a lifetime. And being here in this four years, I just want to open up my circle and get people to know me and just know other individuals and just becoming a well-rounded person in general. And that's exactly where I was actually going to go because Rutgers is one of the most diverse universities there is in the country. Right. And when you go to class, you can see somebody different every single time. Right. How have you been able to open up that circle and, and invest in others, in other interests, like you said, the poetry, mm -hmm. the sad club? How have you been able to meet other people besides the athletes that you see at the Hale Center? Um, the biggest thing is just being around campus. Like I said, me and my friends walk around. I have conversations with everybody. People will come up to me. I'll come up to people, just have simple conversations. They obviously know that I play football and they know that at the end of the day. I want them to get to know me as a person. So I'm in class. Even if we have football players in our room, they love being in groups with each other. But at the end of the day, I get in groups that I've never seen people before. Like if I've never seen that person, I never talked to them. I like to talk to them and get to know them because they can see the true me and not the football player. They'll see the actual touchdown folks. So that's why I enjoy doing it. And that's how I kind of get involved in other extracurricular activities. Last one. When you're done with football, Right. What's your vision? What do you want to do with your life and your career? Um, even though I'm kind of going down a human resource management path, I kind of want to go into like more of marketing and things of that nature. I always want to stay close to the game of football. I love football, and hopefully this career can extend to the National Football League and pass then. But at the end of the day, I still know it's going to end one day. So the marketing path is somewhere I kind of want to go. But at the end of the day, I still got another semester in a year, so I'm still kind of interested in everything, and I'm still trying to narrow my path. But that's something that's truly interesting in me right now. So that's something I want to focus on. Outstanding stuff, and congratulations on being a Big Ten Distinguished Scholar, and obviously everything going on, SAC, being a captain of this team, uh, all of your success. We appreciate it, and best of luck this week against Absolutely. Maryland. Absolutely, appreciate thank, it. Thank, thank you. you for your leadership, man. Sure. Thank you. Tyshawn Fogg, one of the Rutgers co-captains, linebacker, joining us on this week's Rutgers football show. Coach Nunzio Campanelli will rejoin us here in just a moment. We've got more questions on Twitter. If you've got a question here in person at the Rutgers Club, come on up front and ask it. We've got uh, the microphone set up and our guy Jimmy Gill over here ready to get you set. All right, from Learfield IMG College, this is the Rutgers football radio show. It's after hours. You're stuck at work. You're feeling lousy. There are those times when you need to see a doctor, but you just can't get there. So what do you do? Where do you go? You go to the RWJ Barnabas Health Telemed app, and you get to see the doctor right away. Whenever you want, wherever you are, on whatever device you choose. It's that simple and that convenient. No appointment necessary for access to doctors who all meet our high standards. In fact, you can even see physician profiles and read about doctors who fit your needs and match your symptoms. But most importantly, you get a diagnosis when you need it, where you want it, 24-7. Download Telemed from RWJ Barnabas Health at the App Store or visit rwjbh.org slash telemed. Now you can see the doctor even when you can't go to the doctor. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. This is the Rutgers Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. One in three adults has prediabetes. One in three. That means it could be you, your football buddy, your football buddy, or you, your best man, your worst man, you, your dog walker, your cat jogger. While one in three adults has prediabetes, with early diagnosis, prediabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its prediabetes awareness partners. We depend on our drinking water supply daily, but where does that water come from? Your water provider encourages you to get to know your local water source so together we can protect and preserve it. The investments we make as a community to protect our water source now ensure we have a sustainable drinking water supply for the future. Visit drinktap.org to learn more. This message is brought to you by the American Water Works Association and your local water provider. have returned to the Rutgers football radio show here on scarletknights.com and the Scarlet Knights app, of course, on our vision as well. And on 1450 WCTC, Rutgers interim head coach Nunzio Campanelli 
uh, rejoins us. Uh, one thing I want to remind fans of coming up October 28th, presented by New Roads Financial Group, the seventh annual evening with Eric Legrand. It's a fundraiser for Team Legrand of the Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation. And you know, more and more, I'm seeing a lot more of the uh, role model 52 t-shirts all over the place. Yeah, we'll have them there that night and it's, it's taken off. A lot of people have joined me and supported me you know, with the, my clothing line, and then when I came out with the white ones for National Disabilities Awareness Month, it's really taken off, and it's been incredible. And then this night now, leading into this event, Jason Newcomb and Ron Garuda Jr. do a great job putting this together, their whole financial firm, and we come out, we have a great night with some great, great items, and then we always have a guest speaker, because I think a big part of it is showing the spinal injury community and show. It's not just me that's injured. injured. There's 5.4 million people out there that are dealing with some type of paralysis, so I'd like to be able to let them go up there and share their story as well. So if you have questions, by all means, contact New Roads Financial Group to get involved, 908-730-6346. That's 908-730-6346. That is coming up on October the 28th. Coach Campanelli uh, rejoins us, and let's talk about Tyshawn for a minute because it's not hard to see how that's a guy that, as you're stepping in, that you can rely on as one of the leaders of this football team to get their mind right going into the game this week. Oh, for sure. He's, he's an impressive young man. I mean, you know, I, I really kind of started to get to know him last year through recruiting. You know, got to sit down and have some dinners and stuff, some of the recruiting visits, and you're like, man, this guy is he's exactly what you're looking for. You know, that's kind of what I was talking about when I was saying, you know, raising two sons that you want, you know, who do you want him around? I mean, how do you not want him around that guy? You know, I mean, there's, there's nothing about him that doesn't say, like, hey, you know, you could build a team around this guy, everything. You know, he's... Is exactly what you want in a leader, and you know that's why he's been such a successful player for us. And it's hard to, you know, mock somebody that's the same as Tyshawn Fogg and coming up with somebody you think is similar. But I want to ask: Is there anybody else similar on the team that you can rely on on the offensive side as well? Oh yeah, I mean I think there are a bunch of them, you know. But uh, it, you know, in, in almost every position, like guys like Mike Mayetti is, you know, he's a phenomenal kid. He does, you know, is the type of guy that you know, is a tremendous leader. But, you know, there's a bunch of them. I mean, you know, Raheem is phenomenal. He's a great student. He's a great player. He's a great kid. He will do anything he can to help the people around him. I mean, really, I, honestly, I think the team's loaded with him. But, you know, uh, but when you look at the team, you say, well, you know, Tyshawn in particular, he does stand out. All right, a couple of more questions on Twitter for you that we have. Actually, first, I didn't realize our man Jim is right here. Uh, Jim in North Brunswick is here in attendance at the Rutgers Club. Jim, fire away with your question. Congratulations, Coach. Uh, my question is, as the new interim coach, what is the biggest impact you can have on this team this year? You know, I, I think, you know, one of the biggest things really is just going to be, you know, get us back to playing hard, uh, believing in themselves, believing in each other, you know, and, and just going out there and, you know, fighting and having fun with each other and for each other. You know, I think that's one of the biggest things. I mean, you know, those last couple of weeks were pretty tough, and I, I think the kids were a little down, and you know, so hopefully we can kind of breathe a little new life into the team and, you know, get everybody playing hard. I think that's the biggest thing. I think when, when everybody plays with tremendous effort, I, I've been telling my teams this forever. You know, you show each other how much you care by how hard you play. And, if you know, if we get, you know, every guy on the team practicing that way every day and playing that way, all of a sudden you kind of start making good things happen for you. So, you know, that, that's probably the number one focus. And my table wants me to ask you, is it gravy or sauce? I'm a, I'm a sauce guy. I don't know. I'm, I know I, every Sunday of my life I woke up to my grandmother frying sausage, so that was like, you yeah, know, I mean, sauce. I was just going to ask, like, what's Sunday like in that house? So I, this is a true story. So my brother, uh, Anthony, was, I don't know if I, I might have said this last year. I don't know if it's a true story, though. My brother, Anthony, had this girl call him. We were sat down to have dinner on a Sunday. It was about 2 o'clock. He was young, like 22, you know, right, maybe in college. The girl called him. He's like, I just sat down and have dinner with my family. I'll call you when I'm done. So she calls back around 4 o'clock, and he says, uh, yeah, I told you I'll, I'll call you when I'm done having dinner with my family. You know? <laughs> so she calls back around 7 o'clock, and she's like, what's the matter with you? You said you were going to call me. He's like, I told you I'll call you when I'm done having dinner with my family. <laughs> it was a true story. I swear that was a true story. So, uh, you know, I mean, when, when, uh, when you get my family together, it's a, it's a great day. You know, and my family just keeps growing. You know, there's five of us, and... Uh, my brother Nick is a little slow to the switch getting married, but there, everyone else is, you know, having kids left and right, so it's, uh, it's great. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> All right, we'll take one more quick break. More to do with Coach Nunzio Campanelli as Rutgers prepares for Maryland this week from Learfield IMG College. This is the Rutgers Football Radio Show. 
Your bank records are secure. Your first grader can write code. Your package is being delivered, and your driver is one minute away. As technology enhances our everyday lives, SHI International ensures the schools and businesses developing new technologies have the tools and expertise they need to compete and win in the ever-changing global marketplace. Find out how SHI supports the business and technical needs of more than 20,000 of the world's most complex IT organizations by visiting SHI.com. That's SHI.com. SHI, innovative solutions, world-class support. Cold? Cough? Flu symptoms? Sounds like you should see a doctor. So where do you go? You go to the RWJ Barnabas Health Telemed app, and you get to see the doctor right away, whenever you want, on whatever device you choose. It's that simple and that convenient. No appointment necessary. Download Telemed from RWJ Barnabas Health at the App Store or visit rwjbh.org slash telemed. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. This is the Rutgers Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Millions plan for retirement online, estimate your future benefits, apply for retirement, and manage your benefits all from the comfort of your home and give yourself the freedom to do what you want offline. Social Security's online services help put you in control with secure access to your information anytime, anywhere, allowing you to spend more time with family, friends, or simply just enjoying the day. Social Security, securing today and tomorrow. See what you can do online at socialsecurity.gov. Produced at U.S. taxpayer expense. Hi, it's Olivia Munn with my shelter pets, Frankie and Chance. Say hi, guys. (coughs) When I adopted them, I discovered that they both have incredible personalities. Chance's sole purpose in life is to love and to be loved. Frankie is a little bit of a scoundrel and always entertaining. (coughs) They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Adopt Pure Love at theshelterpetproject.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council, the Humane Society of the United States, and Maddie's Fund. SHI helps companies select, deploy, and manage cutting-edge technology. Find out how by visiting shi.com. SHI, Innovative Solutions, World Class Support. Another minute or two with Rutgers Interim Head Coach Anthony Campanelli. We did have, er, I'm sorry, Nunzio Campanelli. Not Anthony, Nunzio. It's all good. <laughs> At any rate, uh, Coach, um, we have had this question a couple of times this week. Just people asking about what you had to say about recruiting the other day. So how are you kind of handling that right now as an interim coach? You're, I know you talked a lot about the guys who have committed already, but also the... How do you handle the guys that maybe you want to chase after because you don't know what the situation is? Uh, yeah, it's not easy. I mean, obviously, we're going to stay in contact. We're going to recruit them, you know, just like we always have. It just, you know, we, we have to be careful as far as, you know, what the situation is. It, you know, uh, I don't believe that we're in a position right now to say we're going to make the decisions about, you know, the future players of Rutgers football outside of the guys that are, that are committed, you know. So, uh, you know, they, they're, but there are exceptions to that, I'm sure. You know, there are some players that we've recruited – you know, really strongly and really closely, and, you know, we still think we have a shot at, and, you know, uh, you know, it's a little bit the way college football is. You know, sometimes you, you really hope they're committing to the school and the program, you know, because, uh, you know, obviously there's a lot of turnover in this business, and, you know, you want kids that love the school and love the program and, and see the benefits of all the great things that Rutgers has to offer. So, uh, you know, obviously we're going to continue to recruit really hard, uh, but, you know, we're also going to be respectful of the, of the position that we're in and, you know, make sure that we're doing what's best for the program. We talked about the change. We talked about the week. Quickly, Coach, tell us about Maryland on Saturday. What do you see? Well, you know, obviously they're a really talented team. They're, they're going through, you know, uh, an opposite transition with a new coach coming in. And, you know, they're, you know, obviously developing their culture, developing their offense and their defense. But they got a ton of really talented players. Um, you know, obviously we know, I mean, we had a really rough game with them last year. So, you know, we, we have a pretty good understanding of how good and how talented they are. And, um, you know, I, I really think that our biggest focus this week has been on us um, because, you know, obviously we got to be able to handle the things that they do. But, you know, we, we, if we get our, you know, our house in order, that gives us the best chance to be successful. And 10 seconds, your message to the fans right now. I just really hope everybody shows up and supports our kids. You know, I think they're going to go out and they're going to play really hard and uh, they're going to represent Rutgers. They're going to represent New Jersey. They're going to do things the right way. And, uh, you know, we're really excited to put the tee the ball up on Saturday. Coach, thanks so much. Thank you. Good luck, Coach. Rutgers in Maryland. It is Saturday at noon. We thank Rutgers interim head coach Nunzio Campanelli for joining us on this week's edition 
of the Rutgers Football Radio Show. For Eric Legrand and our entire crew, this is Chris Carlin speaking. Have a great week, everybody. Rutgers and Maryland, Saturday at noon at SHI Stadium. See you there. Thank you for listening to the Rutgers Football Show. Join us throughout the season from the Rutgers Club to talk Scarlet Knights football. Tonight's show has been brought to you by... The preceding has been a Learfield IMG College presentation of the Rutgers Sports Network.